Hey, what up, everybody? What's poppin'? What you guys up to? Happy Saturday, motherfuckers. I think my voice just squeaked. What up? Happy rainy day, sons of bitches. What's poppin'? What you guys up to? Check this out. We can't see it's in watercolor, and it look I got this as a black and gray joint, but it's all good. Just sharing some positive energy with you. What up, Mike? What up, Kevin? What up, Lisa? What up, Amanda? I appreciate you guys. The, the people that hop on here is like the fastest. I really appreciate it, man. You guys are awesome. What up, Amanda? What's poppin', motherfuckers? Thank you. Oh, shit. You guys want to see some crazy shit? I got, a, I got a bunch of stuff I've been working on. That's a new one. That's a new one. I love that one. Uh, what up, what up, Gina? What up, Cameron? What up, Crystal? What up, Antonia? Um, I am not tattooing right now. What up, Melissa? What up, Lydia? I am not tattooing. I am just drawing. I am um, getting ready to go pick up my nephews. And to be real, I was just on a phone call. I have had to handle some business today. So handled some business. And I thought, you know what? Maybe I'll hop on Facebook and try to share some positive energy and you know, just vibe out every time I'm on the phone, which is like never. So Ritz called me last night, my homie Ritz, and uh, I'm going to go out and tattoo some cool shit on him. And we were plotting on some shit last night for the new, uh, his new record label. And while we were doing that, um, I was drawing like I never talk on the phone, so I can't fucking just do one thing at a time. So he called me at fucking like 2.30 in the morning and we talk till six as cheesy as that sounds i don't ever talk on the phone let alone to no dude but brits is the homie and he's been traveling the world and he just got off tech nine's label so we were talking about we we're talking about a lot of stuff but it's all it's all relative but let's just say i was started drawing this because i can't sit still for five fucking minutes of my life man so i can't just be accomplishing one thing i'm always trying to like make some art or make something with my hands Ask your mama, <laughs> motherfucker. Anyway, so before I leave for the day and go scoop my nephews, so I, t I moved around on my appointments for the week so I could see my nephews before they go out of town. They're going to be in town a like maybe two more weeks longer than I thought. So I'm going to go scoop. I think I'm going to scoop Legend today and then scoop Bentley next weekend. Or maybe even scoop Bentley on Sunday. I don't know, either way. I just thought, you know what? Maybe America would like to see what I'm working on. Uh, what up, Hick? What up, Shift? What up, Michael? What up, Brian? You're welcome, Jenna. Is it Jenna or Jenna? I can't say it right. I don't want to say it right. What up, Christina? Oh, uh, you're the shit. Antonia. Trujillo. I am not tattooing anything. I'm just drawing. What up, Aaron? What up, Amanda? What part of Florida? I think Cape. Cape something. Cape Coral? Cape Corral? Something? I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. It makes me sad. Damn it, nothing like fucking up your shade right there. There's like a little texture in it. I had to get rid of it. God bless it. I need to I need to get handy with that fucking um I bought this thing, like a it's called a gimbal where like you put your it's like a stick and you put your phone on it and then like it, it moves all crazy like a fucking robot. I mean it is a robot, but it moves crazy like a robot and lets you look like you're filming a movie. I was showing one to the guy from Channel 6 yesterday when he was at the crib. All right, so check this out. For anybody that wants to make art or whatever, let me take the fucking filter off this so you guys can see what this really looks like in real time. All right. It's just hella dark in my crib right now. Here, I'll tell you what. Let me turn some more lights on. You guys can go with me. Oh, shit. My fucking foot is asleep. There goes my Tupac cross sitting by my light. All right, check this out. It's a big old blanket I got on me and my nieces. I tried to get it on channel six yesterday when they came in. Okay, so check these out. 
I had these all out yesterday because when all the flood and water shit happened at the crib, it almost ruined some of my paintings, so I had to reframe some of my stuff and show you guys some of my stuff. What up, Eddie? What up, Michael? What up, Ashley? What up, Rod? My fucking leg is so asleep. Oh my God, I can't barely move. Thank you, guys. Huh? And a Bentley or a Legend Supreme right there. Okay, okay. How can I get a canvas? Oh, I got I got hella canvases. Oh, I got hella canvases. Bam. There go my little peep. What up, Bree? Uh, yeah, Crystal, you have to come up to the shop and come holler at me about it. There goes my ex. I love that one. This I took at Disneyland. This is a photo that I took at Disneyland. I had I have printed on canvas or whatever. I love that one. This is at Disneyland. This fucking statue is right in front of one of the fountains in California. All right. I have this is my art supply room, aka my living room, aka my fucking entertainment center thing got fucked up when the water flood happened. So all my stuff is in fucking. Como se dice, uh, totes, totes my goats. And then here's the toy area for my crazy nephews. My fucking life size Supermans. All right. All right. Yeah, I like this one a lot. I'm working on this one. I was working on a gray tone study just to kind of, you know, just to kind of get my tones matched up. I'm trying to, I'm trying to level up and take my tones to another level. So there's like the model reference I was going after. And there's, there's the vibe. Kind of shit you do when you're trying to just get your fucking portrait game on a little bit stronger. She looks hot though. All right. Oh shit, there's another cool one. Yo, if you, if you guys ever came to my crib, you'd see how much fucking art I have. You'd be like, oh my God, this guy is fucking addicted. Not like you didn't know that already. Seems like I got candy, art supplies, toys, and music shit everywhere. Yeah. Make me a, make me a believer. Believer. Hey. So, this is like one of my thousand buckets of fucking pens and pencils and shit. So, this is called a blending stump. With a blending stump, it really is just like tightly wound paper. And what you do is, this is what I teach in my art class, or this is one of the things I teach. So, like, I'm going to teach you guys how to do this real quick. And then if you guys have kids that you want to show this to your kids, you just rewind this shit and go back and show them. So here's the trick. You take a piece of paper and you put it down so you don't smear your fucking, what do you call it? I guess your graphite from your pencil. Now, you go like this. So here's the one thing I learned in art school, or one thing I learned in high school, I guess, in art class. Um... I don't feel like I learned hardly shit like in those classes. So you take, I don't ever have my pencil out farther than that. I always use a mechanical. I'm not all bougie with the fucking, all the different art pencils. And I start doing little circles. Now you always have your hand on a piece of paper so you're not smearing your fucking drawing underneath it because the oils in your hand will always smear your shit. So then you go like this and you just do a bunch of little circles. I always go like, I guess clockwise, is that? No, counterclockwise. I go counterclockwise. Now, you always want to get, like, a flat edge on your pencil. So, if that's the case, then you can just go like this and get it to where there's, like, a flat edge. Now, that flat edge will allow you to shade a little bit smoother and not leave a bunch of tooth. It's called tooth. Or, I guess, the tooth of the paper will leave a texture on your paper. So, you go like that. So, what I, I kind of consider this putting, like, a pool of ink on the paper. But it's not ink. It's graphite. So, you go like that. And you kind of smooth it out on the edges. And then you kind of do a little bit more on this side. So then watch. Wait till I show you guys how this works. It's fucking tight. And then maybe like you'll say, all right, this is where the beveled edge. This is where it's going to be 3D. So you kind of shade like that. So at this point, this is going to become this new ledge. And it's going to get shaded down. So I kind of like sculpt it. You always push your shade the direction you want your shadow to fucking fall. And then up here, you want the shadow to fall this direction. So it's going to look like this thing is curling around and, and like bending. 
So this I'm doing like lines. This is called like it's like whip shading mixed with like uh what do you call it? Cross hatching, except for cross hatching would be if I'd go this direction and I'm not. So it's really just hatching. Okay. Oh yeah, peep this. This is what she looks like in color. This is like one of my paintings. It's just taped to this big board. This is what I painted on. Alright, so so let me get back to this. So this is this is where the cool part is. So you take this blending stump. These are not even like a fucking dollar. Yeah, like you go to the art supply store and they'll have like this size and this size and a fucking, you know, there'd be like three or four of them in like a little fucking, what do you call it? Like a little package or whatever. So you take one of these, then you get this. So these show up like just totally clear when you get them. So you do the same direction circle or, sh or line. I always do little circles though. And what it does is it hides the tone. And it hides the texture and it makes it perfect. So, But it also puts this fucking pigment on your, what do you call it, on your blending stump. So then, look, you can do it somewhere else without having any shade. And it makes such a perfect shade. So you're pretty much just trapping the fucking graphite overage on your fucking blending stump. So here's where it gets crazy. You take it, and the harder that you push, just like with a piano, the harder that you push on a piano, the louder the sound is. The harder that you push on your blending stump or your pencil the darker or bolder your shade will come out. So, I'm shading. I'm smoothing it out. And you see how fucking smooth that looks compared to what it did a minute ago. Now watch this. Then you can go like this. And let's say I want this to be really fucking dark. I'm just pushing harder and harder. And then you do a bunch of little circles and pull them down. And you see how smooth that shit's coming out? This has always been the secret to my shading. Only problem is it doesn't teach you about light source. It just allows you to fucking, like, pull your tones out smoother. So you'll have really smooth tones, but you still gotta understand what's making the light go from dark to light. That took me years and years and years to learn. I don't understand why it was always so hard for me to understand light source and, I guess, values and tones and shit like that. But I eventually learned them, but it, it took me forever. But I also feel like I never had any art teacher that would explain shit in common, in, in like English, that made fucking sense to me. You know what I mean? I always felt like they would either talk above me or they would talk like in, t in words that I didn't understand. There's very few people that have been ever able to explain it the way I'm trying to explain it. But because I understand psychology, I can understand why I didn't learn it. And I can also understand how to explain to people that learn like I do. So that's me trying to explain like that. So I'm putting a little bit of value back here, or tone back here to kind of push this forward. And I'm going to put a tiny little bit here. And you see how it starts, like, creating this ledge. Oh, a ledge. All right. Yeah, just kind of show you guys, like, how to build this tone. But this technique, you can apply to portraits. I mean, honestly, that's how I did that portrait. It's how I do, it's how I do a lot of my tones. So... It's hard to apply this concept to tattooing because you can't, there's no blending stump in tattooing, but, you know, this isn't a tattoo lesson, this is a fucking art lesson on paper with pencil. I feel like if you can't get the basics down with paper and pencil, then it doesn't matter how expensive your supplies are or how amazing your shit is, like, you need to have paper and pencil as your, as your basis if you want to be any kind of artist, because if you can't understand how to do a pencil sketch, it's going to be really hard for you to apply it to any other medium. But if you understand how to do a pencil sketch, then even like shit like on the tablet, like an iPad or a fucking Surface or any of that kind of shit, if you know how to do it with a paper and pencil or a paper, pencil, and blending stump or paper, pencil, and pen, then when you scan that into the tablet, it fucking translates really well. And then your tablet doesn't have to seem so foreign. It's like you can make the part of it that feels comfortable, paper and pencil, transfer it to or translate it to the fucking tablet, and then utilize all the tablet, uh, I guess, options or fucking digital components that allow you to fucking make it like graphic and then if you know how to do graphics then you got a fucking career so it's like there's not really any way to be like a professional artist on paper and have that translate into a career but you could be a graphic artist if you just start getting comfortable with your paper and pencil and then translate it you gotta know the rules before you can break them you feel me <sighs> gotta be real careful not to smear your pencil God bless it. Another, here's a technique. You go like this on the floor. If you feel like your your eraser is gonna is smearing, then you take it on the floor and it fucking gets rid of like that little tone or whatever. And I guess I'm just destined to have that little dot right there. Because if I try to get rid of it, it's going to force some bullshit. So that's, that's what it do. I like teaching art, man. It makes me feel 
makes me feel like I'm passing on something that will benefit people. So, okay, so right now this is really dark and you see how it bows out, it like, like widens the fucking tip of that. And your mom widens the tip. Ha <laughs> ha, shadow baby. Well, this side doesn't have anything on it because it's brand new. So I'm gonna use that because right here I want this to be really soft. If this was a tattoo, this would be like my lightest tone, you know? It'd be like my one or two drops of my gray wash. And then, now another cool thing you can do, so bet, so now you see, before that was really just a line, and now it's like a 3D area. What up, Chris? Oh, shit. What up, Chris? What up, Peyton? Oh, thank you, Peyton. You're awesome. What up, Tank? What up, Victoria? What up, Leo? What up, Kelsey? What up, Crystal? What up, Aaron? What up, Jimmy? What up, Jimmy? Uh, what up, Sean? What up, Josh? All right, so peep this. Now, here's another cool technique. You could take this fucking eraser... And, like, let's say you wanted to do, like, now you just got to be careful not to smear your vibe. So, really, you want to, like, keep clearing off your fucking eraser. Now, this is kind of sloppy because I'm just using it as a reference to show you guys something. <laughs> Cool, so you see how that shit looks tight. Then I would go back in and I would retone like that and only hit the top left and it would make it look like it's got some movement. Give it some fucking flow and some movement. And then I'd hit the inside, right side, bottom, like a bottom left, top right kind of kind of energy. See how it's coming to life? My little babies. All right. All right, all right. Make me a, make me a believer. I really wish I could listen to music while I was on here, man. I get so jealous when I see other people be able to listen to music. And then for whatever fucking reason, I put any music on my shit. And if I don't own it, God forbid, I get put in goddamn Facebook prison for two weeks. So fucking petty. Um, yeah, I talked to, um, Ritz last night, and I think there's really about to be some big shit popping. I'm about to go out to Atlanta and stay at his house for, like, a few days and go plot on some fucking future shit. I think it's gonna be really awesome. Wait till you guys see what we're working on. Cool. Well, that was my little art technique today. This is called How to Use a Motherfucking Blending Stump. What up, Jose? What up, James? What up, Josh? What up, Ashley? I try to make blending stumps, but haven't gotten the technique down. Oh, uh, fuck making one, bro. You can get one for a fucking nickel at the damn stove. Cool. All right, so I'll just spend like two more minutes on here before I go get my nephews. Just to show you guys some other shit. So here's the other deal. You always use this part of your hand, like the fucking whatever you call this, the back. I can only have two hands, so I can't point. This part right motherfucking here, right? Where my pointer... Yeah, these right here. Use that part, right? And you use that as your pivot like it's a fucking protractor. And you put that part of your hand down. And when you draw, you just go like this. That way you always have like a constant, steady fucking hand. That's what I teach the kids in the art class. Because if you're always trying to like float your hand, you're never going to have a clean line. And if you're always trying to like move your hand, then you're not going to have a clean line. I feel like a lot of other tattoo artists are trying to be influenced by this style right now. So I've been kind of hesitant to show myself drawing a bunch of it. Because then I see it pop up on their page or their feed. Not not the, not this tattoo or what I'm doing. There's just been a bunch of people that have never done this style. That I feel like are doing this style and not really paying any homage. I didn't invent doing henna or mandalas or motherfucking sacred geometry. But I feel like my own blend of this style... It feels very much like my shit, and I feel like there's definitely a couple artists in town that have been inspired by it, and it's not usually people that show any respect to me. It's people that don't show respect to me, so it just kind of bums me out when I see that shit. Although I guess, you know what, I heard this quote, I say it all the time, I, I said it to Ritz last night because we was talking about some people on Strange that are trying to kind of borrow Ritz's energy, but we'll just say, I'm not going to start no controversial conversation, let's just say, um, I said to him, I'd, bet, I'd rather succeed at being 
I'd rather fail at being myself than succeed at being somebody I'm not or succeed at being fake. And he totally agreed. That's the thing, man. There's not all. There's usually a couple creators, and then a bunch of perpetrators that want to be like the creator. Well, I'm not gonna say I'm a creator specifically because I'm influenced by a bunch of other people. But the thing is, when I see them or when I borrow that style or that energy, I'll fucking shout those people out. When I see them, I'll fucking tell them, man, I'm super inspired by your shit and I love your style. But the thing is, people that want to not be like that will purposely not go places you're going to be and will purposely not share that energy. And I don't I don't think that the universe is going to let people grow if their mission is just to steal. I think you have to be able to give something to the culture, not just take from it. So that's the deal. Like, I was inspired by people that made mandalas. I was inspired by people that made henna. I was inspired by people that did sacred geometry. You know, sacred geometry is part of our universe. It's like, it's like the deeper underlying geometric shapes that are in everything like sacred geometry is in a tree if you cut a tree down and you look at the fucking molecular structure of the tree sacred geometry is in a leaf it's in it's in the, the swirl of a snail like you'll notice there's the exact same numbers in the swirl lines and divots of a snail as there are like in our own fucking um dna or you know i'm paraphrasing but i'm saying like everything in nature has all these patterns so it's crazy like i'm inspired by all those things but anytime i see somebody that's fucking amazing at those styles i'll shout them out or i'll show them love i won't just steal from them i'm not just going to screenshot their shit and then start perpetrating it like it's my own and i feel like god i've been doing this henna style for so long and i feel like so many people hated on me for it that weren't clients i mean of course i have clients for it but then as soon as i started kind of blowing up for it and traveling around the world and doing it it just seemed like a lot of people are like oh yeah here's here's this mandala style i'm like won't you at least call it shadow and canna vibes or tag a motherfucker in it or at least shout me out when you see me but but i don't know me and jojo kind of crack up about it at the shop he'll he'll screenshot something and show me and be like yo there's another mini shadow out here or or i got some friends at the shop like it'll be people that are wearing the style and every time they see another artist in town tattoo that style they'll screenshot it and send it to me sometimes i want to go like the pictures and other times i just want to be like damn like i'm i'm part of me is honored and part of me is kind of like it'd be like if i was dating a chick and you acted like my chick was ugly and then you start trying to like fuck her little sister which has also happened <laughs> it's just crazy how the universe works man i'll just say you know you're doing something right if people are, are trying to be inspired by it and it's an honor to be an inspiration Shout out to Bethany. I did a really cool memorial piece yesterday for the homie John that passed away. I got to do a really cool toucan on her forearm. I just posted it a little while ago. It came out really, really bright. It was in a style I don't do that often, so I try to pay extra homage to him and really make it glow and really make it pop. And it came out really cool, man. And I did that big scar cover up yesterday or the day before yesterday i'm forgetting my days uh like friday or something like that or thursday i don't even know what fucking day today is the ritz thought it was wednesday when we were talking last night <laughs> like how many days have you been up bro anyway so we we're uh anyway i did that scar cover up yo that scar was like an inch deep and like two inches wide and like a foot and a half tall and i fucking covered it up like it's not even there yo that shit looks so fucking smooth um, I haven't posted my official like before and after pics, but it's about to fucking, it's, it's about to be on. I wish I could become more like a doctor that tattooed or not, a, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wish I could do more like the breast cancer, um, pieces, you know, to cut, to re, to re create the nipples and like cover scar texture and like do stuff where like I could, I guess more what I'm saying is I wish I could help utilize my ability to do that on more of like a global scale for people to like, like a confidence builder for people that have like medical situations that make them not confident. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe I'll invent that for the future and that'll be something I can travel the world and do. But like, I feel like I have a, a special knack for bringing confidence to people in situations like that. You know, I think a lot of it probably comes from things I'm not confident about. Or over the course of my life, I've been not confident about certain things. So it's made me pay homage to certain things in other people. Like if I can help somebody have confidence. Just like anytime I see a poor kid that reminds me of myself when I was younger, I'll fucking pull them to the side and try to inspire them. Anytime I see anybody that's getting money that doesn't know how to save it that, because they started off poor and they're spending it like they're still poor, I'll fucking say, hey, look, I was in the same situation for a long time and 
this is what I started doing to start saving my money. Like, I'm always trying to help somebody when I can see a similarity that, you know what I'm saying, that pertains to my own life. I'm just trying to help fucking change the world, man. What up, Raven? What up, Edriel? I don't know how if I said that right. What up, Edriel? What up, Jenna? What up, Amanda? Thank you, Amanda. Oh, thank you, Amanda. I saw that you commented on that. What up, Larry? What up, Sydney? What up, Josh? What up, Peyton? I'm from Walmart, and I like them. They have eight different sizes. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I got the same ones. Walmart has them. What uh, What up, Kathy? Yeah, you can get them anywhere, Josh. They're fucking super cheap. Shit, if you can't... I'm about to say if you can't find one, I'll give you one, but you, they're everywhere, bro. You say, just say you don't own the rights. Bro, it does not work like that, homie. I've done every single thing... Uh, Facebook picks on me in a specific... This the reason my goddamn name says Joshua instead of motherfucking Shadow Inc. is because they won't let me... They won't. They don't want me to have nice things. They won't let me have my shit. I can't have my fucking name. I'm about to change my name uh, legally just so I can fucking be myself everywhere I motherfucking go. Not that I don't feel like I'm Josh, but I haven't been called Josh in fucking 20 motherfucking years. Longer than my whole fucking life I haven't been called Josh except for when I was like up to eighth grade or some shit so can a motherfucker be who a motherfucker is without i'm about to say jojo's daughter her shit is called her, her shit says princess ray and when they tried to take her princess away he when it sounds crazy when they try to take her princess away when joe reached out and said what do you call it joe reached out or she reached out and said my grandma who died called me princess forever so that's that's my nickname in my family and facebook let her have it i tell facebook my rap name is shadow ink my tattoo name is shadow ink i sold 20,000 albums as shadow ink i got 200,000 online followers as shadow ink i have three companies under shadow ink i have trademarked the name shadow ink i have copywritten shadow ink i have logos copywritten underneath the name shadow ink i have fucking a clothing line owned by the title shadow ink and motherfuckers are like well send us your id well i went out and got some ids in the name shadow ink but none of them were my license and they said sorry and now you can't even resubmit this question for six months or 60 days whatever the fuck it was so i haven't resubmitted it yet and i'm in the process i reached out to the homie danny who's like a lawyer he's almost a lawyer he's about to take his bar and he was showing me how to get i guess officiated as a motherfucking a motherfucker named shadow ink baby anyway i don't know i'll be running off on tangents if you can't tell america one minute i'm talking about art next minute i'm talking about tattoos next minute i'm talking about memorials next minute i'm talking about scars next minute i'm talking about empowering people with breast cancer surgery next minute i'm talking about Blending stumps. You know, you gotta hop on a roller coaster and ride that bitch out. Cool. As you can tell, though, the same way I'll be talking to y'all and just drawing feverishly is the same way I'll be doing it when I'm on the phone. I swear to God, last night I'm talking to Ritz and he's like, dog, he's like, it's six in the morning. He's like, are, what are you on? I was like, I'm not on shit. He was like, how are you still awake? And I was like, bro, I'm always awake until like seven in the morning. I was like, what are you on? He's like, what do you think I'm on? I'm like, damn it, Ritz. You're too old for this shit. Get off. Man, Ritz is such a crazy, crazy motherfucker. But, yo, his new music is about to change the game. Yo, I don't know if anybody's heard Caskey's new shit, but Caskey's fucking killing it right now. I love the new shit he's just released. It's nice to see people that I consider friends flourishing in creative endeavors. Oh, I keep trying to swipe up and read your guys' comments. What up, Drew? What up, Liz? They don't want you to succeed. <laughs> How is that you're clowning? What up, Christina? Oh, thank you, Christina. What up, Miguel? What up, Tori? Uh, what up, Raven? Cool. All right, guys. Well, that has been today's motherfucking segment of Watch Me Draw. <laughs> Lil Beavy. I gotta put some damn socks on and get the fuck out of the crib. Go scoop my nephews. Peace. I appreciate y'all. Thank you guys for sharing some energy with me. You guys are the shit. What up, Scott? All right, peace, guys. Thank you. Leave some comments if you guys have any questions or if you want to share, if you got anything to share, offer to the conversation. Fucking leave some comments and let me know what you think about today's art class. Gia. Oh, yeah. Yo, I also got a gang of new um, mini canvases for sale. Um, They're like 50 bucks, 60 bucks, something like that. And they're like, I don't know, they're about the size of this thing, the big thing in the background of this. I think this is 11 by 14. So I think they're like 12, 16 by 20. I think they're like 60 bucks. I got two Einsteins. I got a couple other paintings of mine. 
what I started doing was taking my paintings and getting them printed on canvases like this size. This is a little bit smaller than the ones I've got. This is obviously wrapped in like fucking foam or whatever the fuck so that I can send in the mail. <clears throat> Excuse me. But they're super clean and the, and the quality is just insanely good. Well, I can't pop that off. I was about to pop it off, but I only got one hand available. But yeah, I got a bunch of small ones like that. And then I got some really big ones that I'm only selling for like 150 that are like the size of uh, this, which is fucking gigantic if you see it compared to the size of my hand. So if you guys need any new art for the crib, everybody's always asking me about um, where to get my canvases and how much do I sell them for? Um, I used to sell them for 200 bucks, but then I started, I found out that if I spent a thousand dollars every time I ordered them, that I could get them for like, damn near a lot less money. So now I have gigantic canvases that I don't charge as much money for. And if you guys want, I'll pass that on to y'all. So let me know if you guys want some canvases, how at your boy. I can also get a bunch of my art on big ass blankets like this. Sometimes it's cheaper, sometimes it's way more expensive, but it's like a, I don't know what kind of material this is, but it's super soft. I know your mom likes it. Um, It's like fleece or some shit, it is fleece. Yeah, my little babies. And you see, you can print fucking portraits on it. You can do whatever fuck you want on it. All right, you guys. I'll let you go. Have a good ass day. Thank you for the positive energy. Shadow baby.